I sense a change is coming. Hello everyone, this is Drew's Bruce today, and some of you may have noticed that I have been absent for a while. Now, I'm not implying that I've been sleeping on the job in any way. I've actually been quite busy doing a bunch of little things off on the side that um, I just haven't been posting on the social media for you guys to see. The main things that I've been working on so far is uh, comic artwork. Um, as many of you know, I have been just like trying to develop my storyline for some of my independent comics that I'm doing and stuff and really trying to improve my art style so i'm now in contact with a guy named wes he's an independent comic book publisher and he has a great website i'll be sure to leave a link to his website down in the description below so if you want to check that out it's a great place and then the other main thing that i've also been doing is a lot of research just on youtube in general like how to kind of start getting out there more um one of my main uh intents in doing that is so that i can up my sub count uh i really appreciate you 50 um fans <laughs> right now yeah i'm just doing this uh in attempt to hopefully expand the family if you know what i mean anyways there are going to be a few changes to my new channel now so um the first um, one that you'll probably notice is that it's no longer Drew's Brews art, it's actually just Drew's Brews. I'm just getting that art out of there for now. And then one of the new things that I'm really excited about is I'm actually expanding my arsenal. I'm going to be upgrading a lot of my technology and stuff. So um, right now I've just been using an iPhone SE and a Toshiba laptop. Um, and those are my uh, tools that I've been using this whole time to make my videos, so I'm gonna be upgrading a lot of stuff, getting more um, things so that I can kind of enhance every aspect of the videos. I'm getting better editing software, and I'm also getting a microphone and sound canceling panel so that you guys can um, get a little bit more um, audio quality so you don't have to cringe at all the crappy equipment that I have right now. I'm doing all of this just because I'm tired of having to complain in all my videos about how bad my stuff is. So getting all of this new upgrades for my um, editing stuff and everything, it'll basically just mean that this is the last video that I'm going to be making with the um, old software that I've been using. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, anyways, I'll uh, quit all my complaining and we'll get into the video here. Um, this is the Call of Duty World War II, the cover art for it. So uh, I'll hop right into the video now. Thanks for bearing with me through this. All right, so I decided to draw this drawing because I am a huge fan of Call of Duty, but on top of that, I'm even a fan of World War II, I really like history, and that time period has always fascinated me. And plus, I've had several of my fans actually um, request this drawing, and it's such a cool one too that I just really couldn't escape this even if I wanted to. The textures that I'm going to be covering in this video are skin textures, metal textures, leather textures, and even some water droplets. First I start off with the face, and I always like when I'm doing faces to start off with the eyes on top of that because whenever I know that the eyes look good, they all look lined up and everything, it just helps the whole project go a lot faster. But I do the whole face and this guy does have a pretty pale face and I like to think that he's probably like shell shocked or in some kind of traumatic stress right now so he doesn't have much pigment in his skin and I just match the fine little lines with the contours of his face and then go over it with a gel pen a white colored gel pen so that I can get all the little pores in there I get a little bit of color onto the belt and then add just a little bit of that stress the black dots that you see on there and then start on the helmet from there now for the main water droplets on the helmet, I like to reserve spots for them so before I color over it, I usually take a mechanical pencil and just line out where those are going to be and then start to line out where the netting is going to be on the helmet. Now on this picture, it looks like to me this established light point that they had was a little bit in front of the guy and probably towards the middle but leaning more to the left side. Therefore that right side over there is going to be the darkest area, that's why I just went over everything with a marker first and I used the favorite pa Castell markers, they're just my favorite ones to use. 
There are different kind of uh, marker heads that they have for the favorite Castell series that I use. And um, they have the biggest one, which is what I used on that side. And then to add in the little line textures to make that um, mesh netting on the helmet look more like actual netting instead of just lines, I used the finer grade. I believe it was the M in the series that I have. So even though I've already colored over some of the areas, I'm able to actually add in a few other tiny little water droplets just because a lot of the front area of the helmet is almost white, so I'm able to still create the water droplet effects even though I've colored over it. Anyways, we'll move on to the hands now. When I drew the base layer, I just made sure that the hands look proportionate and then when I actually colored them in, like you're saying right now, I just made sure that I colored with the contour of the hands, really. Just all the fine lines matching the shape that a hand would be moving at. And then for the little bees in the dog tag, I just gave them uh, little spears with metallic look on them. So that was pretty much it for the video. Oh wait, it's not even done yet. You haven't added a background. Get back to the video. Okay, fine, fine, gosh. Anyways, for the background, we just used some pastels. Um, started off with the darker colors and then add some light colors all over. The um, light colors I smudge in just to make sure I don't get dark everywhere and then color those in after that. So after I finish off the darkest areas, I just add a few little shapes in the background to give the background some depth and texture to it. And that's pretty much it for this video. Did you think it was done now? Well, you're wrong. You still need to cut the edges off. Okay, you know what? Fine. But this is the last one. I just untape the drawing at that point and then make sure that I cut the lines off you'll be seeing here shortly um, and made sure to sign my name. And then if you like to, you can also date it in the back just to keep track on your progress. So that's pretty much everything to create this whole drawing. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, finally we're done with that project. <laughs> Thanks for watching the videos guys. Um, you can check out some more um, off of my channel. They're actually going to be like right here and right here. Um, and these are some of my past videos that I've done. Um, I'm hoping, like I said, with my new stuff to get a lot better with my video editing skills and just uh, overall improve the videos. But anyways, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.